So you're probably wondering how I was able to get this many unopened boxes all in one frame. It's basically because I am the king of procrastination. When it comes to homework, I procrastinate. When it comes to doing work, I procrastinate. But the one thing I never procrastinate on is when it comes to fishing. So these boxes just came in today and what I need to do, anytime something fishing related comes in, I open it like that. But we got all this stuff I need to open, so I'm gonna go ahead and open that too, show you guys uh, some of the interesting things I got, and then uh, we can go ahead and get ready, because uh, tomorrow, going to Florida for iCast. Box number one. These are some flies that I ordered for uh, bass fishing. Pretty interesting looking flies. They're supposed to imitate uh, nymphs or crawfish. I still have yet to even try fly fishing, so that's gonna be uh, fun to test these out. All right, on to box number two. Let's see what, oh, hope I didn't scratch the table on that. And we have more flies again. This time, some of the famous woolly buggers, which I've heard a lot about. Up close, you guys take a look at the woolly buggers. The black one I heard is probably the best bait you could use when fly fishing. So far, it's been 100% fly fishing gear. We'll see if uh, that pattern continues. And this time, it's gonna be some camera batteries, some uh, wasabi batteries for my Sony A5100. The nice thing about uh, these wasabis is that you can get them a lot cheaper than name brand Sony's. Um, you can get two for 25 bucks instead of one for like 50 bucks. All right, looks like we got some uh, more flies yet again. These are some pretty unique looking flies. I basically looked at some, looked at some uh, reviews on Amazon and decided uh, based on that. That thing is crazy looking. Look at the little rattle, the eyes rattle. Would be very interested to see if I can catch a uh, fish on this dude. All right, well this, is, uh, this isn't even boxed for some reason, but uh, basically some outlets I picked up for when I'm at iCasting. You know, a lot of times hotel rooms don't have a lot of outlets and I have a lot of batteries to charge. So this guy should definitely get the job done. Ooh, getting through these boxes. Almost at the uh, stuff I've been waiting for. These guys right here. All right, we've got Something that's for fishing, not bass fishing, something you haven't seen me do much of, it's actually catfishing. This is some uh, blood bait that I uh, picked up. So I've used it before, it works really well for smaller catfish. Basically something easy if I don't want to go to the store and get catfish bait, I can uh, use some of this stuff. It works really well with those uh, plastic worms that have the grooves in it and that hold bait. What the? Huge 78 inch swan pool float. Warning, this is not a life-saving device. Hmm. Oh, I remember now. You know how I don't have a boat and I've always wanted something to uh, get on the water with? I thought I'd save some money by investing in this uh, swan pool float. You got, oh, perfect timing. So you saw my uh, swan float right there. Well, I need something to paddle it with. I've got this uh, Atwood emergency paddle. You know, it says emergency, but I figured it'll work just as well for uh, anything else. You know, extendable, row the boat, you know, one side to the other. Now, I'm gonna take a look, see what's in these uh, tackle warehouse boxes. And finally, in this uh, tube, could be a lot of baits in this tube, could be a lot of Senkos, who knows. Let's go ahead and go with uh, this box first. Got a couple items in here. Actually, four items to be exact. First up, some uh, Suffix 832 braid, 15 pound. I'm gonna use that in either my Super Finesse Aldebaran or on my spinning reel. Got a replacement Spro Frog. The uh, one that I've been using caught so many fish it actually doesn't walk anymore because it's uh, so beat up. And some tungsten weights, 38 ounce. Tungsten's a lot more expensive than lead but it's a lot better for the environment and it has a lot of advantages over lead. So I go ahead and shell out the couple extra bucks to buy it. I don't lose tungsten often, so I don't feel too bad about it. And uh, this is a bait I've really been uh, wanting to try. Rio Rico popper right here. Go ahead and take it out, take a quick look at it. So I got a, uh, I got a bluegill pattern on this one. Perfect for the summer when, when all the bluegill are uh, popping around in the morning, around pads, around grass. I'm going to throw this Re Rio Rico and uh, see what he can catch. These are big items right here. Big purchases that I decided to spend some money on, but I think it'll be worth it. Item number one, it's a Luz BB2 speed spool. And uh, the reason why I got this is because it has an extremely large 
line capacity. So it's going to help me if I'm fishing a crankbait, I want to make 50 to 80 yard, I don't know if I can cast 80, but 50 to 70 yard cast. And I really want to launch the bait out there. This reel is going to be the uh, one to do it. So you can see on this reel, it has an extremely thin spool that's going to allow it to hold a ton of line. I mean a ton of line. So this reel is actually going to hold 190 yards of 12 pound line. By far that is the biggest spool of any of my bass fishing gear. So it's going to be fun testing it out. Feels buttery smooth out of the package as it should be. If it wasn't, I'd be a little worried. Spool spins nicely. I'm going to spool it up before I go to iCast and take this down there. Since I'll be fishing from the bank a lot, I might need to uh, I might need the extra casting distance to get to some of those uh, harder to reach places. We got this dude right here. Here we go. It feels like I'm uh, pulling Excalibur out of, the, out of the stone right now. Man, I love how Tap Warehouse packages these rods. Look at that, this tip on here. I've actually gotten rods from Bass Pro Shops where the tip is broken upon shipping, which is uh, extremely frustrating. The rod is in perfect condition. The guides are completely undamaged. So what I decided to buy is a Dobbins Champion Series Rod XP. It's their uh, newer models, which still use the exact same graphite blank that uh, everyone's been loving. But they actually improved the guides, they switched over to the Fuji guides because they were having some problems with their old guides. But uh, I've heard a lot of good things about Dobbin. Never tried out one of their rods. I picked up a, a 7 foot medium power fast action. So it's going to be pretty versatile. I can probably use it for quite a few different things. Uh, I'll be bringing this to Florida. And uh, actually I won't be bringing my travel rods this time. I found out that if you fly with Southwest you can bring a rod tube as a free checked in bag. The rod tube has to be, I have to check it, I think it has to be below 8 feet. And actually this thing is going to serve as that rod tube too. So we got uh, got some couple things to do to prepare for iCast. I'll show you guys uh, what's up. I was fishing with my sub the other day and a little bit of dirt somehow got in my Antares DC even though I didn't even put it on the ground. So uh, it's a little bit, I mean it's slightly rough inside. It's, I don't even notice it now really, but I'm just going to open up and clean it out just to make sure it's in uh, good condition. Time to get this guy open so I can clean him out. Screws out. Let's go ahead and open this up and uh, see how clean it is. And this is what the uh, digital side plate looks like on the inside. And if you see in there, this uh, actually replaced the uh, stock bearings with bokeh bearings to get a little bit extra casting speed. It allows me to cast uh, lighter baits a lot easier. So I've taken it apart here and what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take some uh, dried Q-tips and gently go around all of these uh, surfaces to check for uh, any dirt. Alright, I think this was the problem. There's a little bit of dirt that got around the uh, spool edges. That probably made it feel kind of uh, unsmooth when I was reeling it in. So we'll go ahead and just clean that out a little bit then we'll check. Yeah, there's a lot of dirt in here. A lot of dirt right there. Unfortunately, I don't have time for a full cleaning because I got a ton of stuff I need to do today. But as you can see, I got quite a bit of dirt off of that reel. So let's go ahead and check it out to see how it uh, if it reels any smoother. All right, the cleaning was a complete success. The reel is uh, silky smooth again, as you can see right there. So if you guys ever get dirt in your reel, stop using it right away. Take it home, clean out all the excess dirt. And uh, every six months or a year, take your reel completely apart, clean out all the parts and whatnot, and uh, re-oil and re-grease it. And uh, if you take good care of your stuff, uh, it'll never let you down. I've been using this reel for over 13 years. And as you can see, it still works perfectly. Next order of business, I need to check out to see what length rod tube I can bring on a Southwest airline. Hello? Hello? Hello, this is the callback requested from Southwest Airlines. When... Michael Shao. It's on the line. Press 1 to speak with a customer representative. Thank you for calling Southwest Airlines. This is Jaylene. How may I help you? Hi, uh, I have a flight tomorrow and I was wondering what your uh, rod tube policy, if I wanted to bring a fishing rod, is exactly for check bags. Okay, and you're checking that in? Yeah, I was wondering if there's a length limit and a, a diameter limit on what I can bring. Yeah, let's take a look. One moment. Thank you. An item of sporting equipment may be checked in place of a free piece of luggage at no charge for each fare paying customer. Size and weight restrictions may apply. Um, when checking rods, I'm sorry, containers may measure three inches in diameter 
and up to 91 inches in length. Awesome. Thank you so much. That's perfect. No problem. Thanks for calling Southwest Airlines. Have a good day. Bye. Thanks. Let's go. 91 inches. Let's see. That's 12, 24, 36, 48, 60, 72, 84. Wait, 91? So 84. That's seven and a half, seven feet and seven inches if my math, if my math is correct. Seven feet, seven inches, um, three inches diameter. Let's go check out that rod tube. It is 90... Six inches approximately. I'm gonna need to cut this down a little bit. Make a mark at 91. Diameter is gonna be three and a half inches. Hmm. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this there and uh, I might have to pay an extra fee. We'll see if uh, how much it costs. Um, I need something to cut a thick piece of card. Oh, what do we have here? I think this would do the trick. Am I using the right side? I guess I'll use the bigger teeth. Try to get it done faster. This is one strong rod tube. Come on, get out of there. Oh. Get the dust out. Cap off here. All right, it's good to go. Time to pack in the rods. I can fit about four in here, so I selected uh, four of my bait casting rods to bring with me. And what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna take a couple foam pads to check the rod tips. And I'm gonna just put them in there like that. Now I'm gonna take these rods and I, they, I'm keeping the rod covers on there because the tips are checked a little better, like I was saying. And let's go ahead and slide these in and see how they fit. Work this out right here. Pretty good. So they fit nice and snug up there with the uh, foam padding to protect them. Down here, you can see there's not much room, so Moving around, it's not gonna shake. I have two more foam pads, might as well use these as well for uh, even more protection. Just stick them right there, close the cap. Should be pretty good to go. I'm going to do a little shake test right now, make sure it's sturdy. Oh yeah, shaking it. They aren't even moving at all. All right, maybe they're moving a tiny bit. Not bad though. I think that's uh. Now I just gotta pack my suitcase and uh, I'll be ready to roll. I did it. Packed up, ready to go. Rods in the rod tube. Here's my suitcase. Got my tackle bag, water bottle, extra outlet, tripod down there. All my clothing, extra pair of shoes. And I got my reels right here. Packed them up nice and uh, tight in this ziplock, put the clothes on top, keep them uh, protected. Extra plastics. And these two going on as free check on that is my laptop, um, hard drive, a toothbrush, stuff like that, bring that as carry-on. This is also going as carry-on. This is my camera bag, all my camera gear, GoPro, Sony, the camera I'm holding is going in here. Uh, batteries, extra stuff like that. And uh, oh, one more thing. In order for me to take this suitcase on the plane without paying any uh, extra fees, it needs to weigh 50 pounds or less. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my uh, scale, weighs up to 100 pounds, and uh, let's check the weight. There we go. I think it weighs like 44 pounds, maybe. Can you guys see it? All right, let's see. Oh, check this out. Official weight, 49 pounds, 49.78. We did it. Whew. All right. I'm all packed up, ready to go. Gonna do some editing, get some sleep, and uh, I'll see you guys in Florida.